This is going to be a short update on the U.S. and China trade negotiations that you will not learn about on China Uncensored, Real Vision TV, Hedgeye, or anywhere else. These are things I have pieced together from a bunch of different sources in mainstream media, from Chinese articles written in English, and from my extensive contacts list now that is in mainland China or other hedge funds who have a lot of contacts in China. This is the short version of where we are right now in U.S. and China trade negotiations. The situation is an absolutely enormous mess. Trump's top two trade advisors, Bob Lighthizer and Kyle Bass, and props to Bob Lighthizer for being one of the only people that saw what was going to happen before China joined the World Trade Organization. They don't want a deal. They don't want a trade deal. China wants a deal, but she cannot compromise at all because he's worried about another coup attempt. And there's supposedly, according to the source, some sources I've spoken to, been a few leadership change or assassination attempts on Xi in the last few years because compromise equals weakness for party elites in China. And China was caught majorly off guard when Trump won the 2016 election and then tariffs started in 2018. China thought that it was just rhetoric from Trump. And China thought if you read Peter Schweitzer's new book, Secret Empires, which is extensive, it's available on Audible audiobook. And supposedly Kyle Bass is going to be interviewing the book author in the near future for Real Vision Television. The book was so good, uh, apparently he's just started reading it and really likes it. So does my friend Emma Mullman. This investigative journalist, Peter Schweitzer, goes through all the different corruption, bribery, all this stuff that the Chinese government has done to corporate CEOs here in the U.S. and both political parties and also like trade negotiators in the past and think tank people here in Washington, D.C. and New York City. Trump only really wants a deal, a trade deal, if it helps the U.S. stock market and is pulling numbers in the Midwest because they've been falling and money, basically a large deal for the farmers for a 2020 re-election campaign. Look at all the tweets that Trump has done Monday through Friday when the stock market is open, whether it's Trump, Mnuchin, Larry Kudlow, or Mulvaney and others in the Trump administration that are saying how all the progress for a trade deal. I don't believe it, and none of my contacts do either. Finally, on Tuesday, October 15th, St. Louis Federal Reserve Bank President James Bullard did a speech in London, and he admitted that the Federal Reserve now expects this to drag on for years. Based on all the research I've done, the articles I've read, the sources I've talked to, things I've heard this year, there's three main demands that China has before they would sign anything. The first main demand is that all tariffs are removed as a, quote, gesture of good faith for negotiations and signatures to continue. The second demand, and you're not going to hear this mentioned a lot, is the Huawei CFO is released from her house arrest in Canada. And there are stories that are coming out lately that she's now moving into a new $10 million mansion from a $5 million mansion, and the charges against her in the U.S. are dropped. So her extradition to the U.S. has so far successfully been blocked by her lawyers and the Chinese government. Most media people do not understand how important the Huawei issue is with the Chinese as she's the heiress to a very politically important Chinese billionaire oligarch with a high position in China's ruling government. And Huawei is one of the Chinese Communist Party or Communist Party of China's most important companies to spread China's power all over the globe. And China has a bunch of, I would say, nefarious and also economic dominance and monopolistic plans. You can add all those things together for Huawei going forward. The other third demand is Huawei is removed from the U.S.'s entity list. And this is another important issue that enough people, that not enough people are talking about, that my friend Emma Molman was telling me is very important. So being put on this entity list, and I believe put on the entity list, I think in May, when I did some searches and looked this up, that it's a felony now for American companies to do any business with Huawei. So this is very bad. China does not like this at all. And now we get into the cra even crazier parts of this story. So HSBC Bank, Standard Chartered Bank, and a few other large U.S. banks roll in Huawei charges. Okay, so according to multiple news agencies reporting that HSBC Bank to get U.S. criminal charges against the bank for other dirty dealings over the years, and there's many, if you see the Dirty Money documentary on HSBC Bank, there's an entire hour episode on Netflix, Dirty Money about HSBC Bank. 
and them knowingly laundering billions in drug cartel, organized crime, terrorist money. So charges dropped by the U.S. Department of Justice. HSBC Bank supposedly turned over confidential customer financial information, documents, and other evidence proving alleged crimes that Huawei committed. And there's additional reports that I've found that Standard Chartered Bank and at least two other, and these are more recent, two other large U.S. banks in the last couple months also turned over evidence as well against Huawei. So the Chinese government and also many people living in mainland China are now furious with HSBC Bank. The large support on Chinese social media in mainland China is to blacklist HSBC Bank from doing business in mainland China, which would really hurt the bank considering a large chunk of their revenue and a very large share of their profits are all from Asia, Hong Kong, and mainland China. So this could be at least part of the reason why three key HSBC bank executives, including two of the top China, Hong Kong, Asia division ones, left HSBC bank in barely a month's time span earlier this year. HSBC is in damage control mode. Or another reason is the massive U.S. dollar loan that HSBC Bank gave to the PBOC. So that's a big theory that's going around right now. I know Kyle Bass vehemently believes that this rumor is true. He's investigated it thoroughly. He's tweeted about it multiple times. He even mentioned it in an interview on Yahoo Finance a couple months ago. And the Bank of England may have also gotten involved. That's also swirling with a rumor there because it involves derivatives. It involves a large dollar loan because China does have a dollar shortage. They were blowing through their dollars pretty quickly due to the tariffs and the current account deficits that China is running in the last couple of years. So does the Chinese government want to punish HSBC Bank, collapse the bank, or take over the bank with Ping Eng Insurance? And if you're not familiar with Ping Eng Insurance, they're the largest insurance company in China and one of the largest insurance companies in the world. And they own a large stake in HSBC Bank. I believe it's over 5%. It might be even over 7%. And there were rumors going around Chinese social media that Ping An may have wanted the HSBC CEO removed earlier this year, and they got what they wanted. So finally, if I could wrap things up, because this is a short video, I want to keep things short so you can send this to friends and family who are wondering, again, China Uncensored, I love China Uncensored, they do have good coverage on a lot of different things, but they lack the financial background, the understanding of business, finance, and markets to put all these pieces together, the hedge fund contacts to understand all these things. Kyle Bass has publicly disclosed how earlier this year, about five to six months ago, the U.S. thought that a hundred... 50-page trade agreement with China had been reached and was about to be signed only for China to attempt to remove 50 pages. So all of the enforceable items for intellectual property theft and a lot of the other stuff the U.S. wanted at the last minute, right before the signing was to take place. And then the U.S. walked away from the negotiations for a while. Since then, Kyle Bass has said publicly, and he said this on his recent American Thought Leaders interview from Epoch Times on their YouTube channel, that's 50-something minutes long. I highly recommend listening to it, that a deal won't get done as long as Trump listens to his top trade advisors. James Bullard of the Federal Reserve, St. Louis Federal Reserve, disclosed that the Federal Reserve is preparing for no deal to get done for years, which means that these negotiations have no meaningful progress, despite what President Trump, U.S. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, Larry Kudlow, Mick Mulvaney, and the other people in the Trump administration that Trump is puppeting up there claim almost daily when the U.S. stock markets are open Monday through Friday. So this that's just to rig the stock market. That's perception. The reality is much different. Any agreement announced by Trump will probably have nothing enforceable and China will keep on cheating. Business as usual for the Chinese, they make a lot of money or they did make a lot of money running trade surpluses in the past and also getting free research and development and free intellectual property. There are some estimates that the Chinese have stolen trillions of dollars worth of intellectual property for the last couple decades from the US, European Union, Japan, South Korea, England, etc. China has been retaliating against Canada for Canada helping the US out with the Huawei CFO. And for the people out there who are saying that the US did not ask Canada to do that, Trump has even referred to Canada helping months ago with the Huawei CFO in a tweet. This was months ago. So, so far, China has arrested at least four to five Canadians. This is very recently living and working inside mainland uh, China on suspicion of, quote, spying, as well as harsher sentences on alleged Canadian criminals inside mainland China. And ultimately, I think if there is a trade agreement, or if there's not a trade agreement, both sides will claim victory 
Meanwhile, the majority of people in both countries will not benefit from any kind of agreement. It's just truly sad. It's hurting a lot of people. It's very unfortunate. This is the nature of government and why I don't trust any government at this point. But from what I'm hearing from my top sources in China, that China's claiming victory right now. And then Trump clearly on Twitter was trying to claim that it was going to be such a great trade deal, trying to claim victory too, how it's going to help the farmers. The reality of the situation for both countries, both governments is very different than what is being claimed.